All right, hello, and welcome back to my RTS tutorial in Unity. Today, we're starting work on the GUI in particular. Uh, we are doing like unit selection. Uh, then next time, we're going to be doing the mouse cursor. So if we hover over different things, it will change to the respective icon. So say if we were having workers, we'd uh, have like a little sickle icon here or a pickaxe here or whatever. So yeah, so and in the third episode, we'll be doing something that I've not remembered, but whatever. We'll get to that when we get in three weeks. Uh, so first off, uh, we have more than one unit type selected. We can go, well, we see, we've got more than one. We've got all of the units, basically. So archers, hoplites, and workers. We've got this option to filter by unit. So I'll say we want to filter hoplites. We've now just got the hoplite selected. We can prove that by just right clicking and all only the things here. And it'll just basically we've got uh, a box for the stats of the unit first. And I've left a space here. Basically, I've, oh, that was the third thing I was going to implement. Uh, so it's that was like uh, functions for that we can put into buttons. So, say if you wanted a hoplite to patrol. Or if you wanted a worker to build something, you wanted to create a formation, stuff like that. That is what's going to go here in two episodes' time. Because, and one more thing is, I know things like buildings and stuff will need GUI eventually, but since I haven't implemented them, I'm going to have to revisit them when I do it. But I thought, get the basics of the GUI out of the way first, because it'll be easier to demonstrate like using units making buildings create units and stuff when we have a GUI so we can actually click on it in the game and show you rather than just binding it to a key press or something to test it. So yeah, that's why I'm doing that. And now we will go on to uh, how it works. Okay, so I'm just going to go over the changes I've made to the unit masterclass actually first because it was a simple change. Basically, We've added a string unit type to it, which if we look in the inspector, we can see basically it's just uh, archer, hoplite, worker. And this is basically used to filter out units in the uh, selection manager. So first off, just as a thing, uh, basically we've using the GUI to filter stuff. It was causing some bother where we, like if you didn't hit any, a unit when you clicked, it would, clear all the units. So I've moved that to be down to the middle mouse button. So now if you press the middle mouse button, it will clear all the units that you've selected. Well, not, that's not that important. Uh, so if we go down here, we've got a couple of methods that I've written. Uh, these are the filter workers, uh, filter top lights and filter archers. They basically work the same, so I'll just go through the one. Uh, basically, we get a list of the game object or the unit that we are wanting to find, and we go through all the selected units. And if the uh, we can, if we get basically, if the unit type is equal to worker or hoplite or whatever, we'll add that to the array uh, to the list. Sorry, and then I don't need that debug. But, and then we just set the selected to workers, and we clear the rest of the list beforehand. So. We get rid of all the currently selected and just select the selected to be the workers that we found that were in the list. Now, uh, I've also got a couple of new methods. So get selected types. Uh, this basically returns a list of strings of, well, basically, uh, all, basically, uh, sorry. It returns a list of strings, but what it does, it goes through, uh, uses a similar method to the filter where it goes through the selected uh, units and we'll check if we have units of each type. So we're checking here if we've got any workers in the list, if we've got any hoplites or any archers. And if the respective list, so we've got a list for workers with hoplites and for archers, if this list is more than zero, that'd imply we've got one or more of that unit type. So we'll add the, uh, what is there a, uh, well, unit type to the list of return values that we return. Uh, this is basically used for the filtering. So we'll get this list uh, and that'll return, say, all three of these. So we'll know, all right, we want to draw a button for filtering workers, filtering hoplites, and filtering archers, 
or we could just do two, or if we selected one unit, then we don't need to. It's already filtered. So yeah, that's why we have this. We get selected types. Uh, we also have a Boolean to check if there is more than one unit type selected. So basically, we just call this get selected types method. And if there's more than one element in that list, we return true because we've selected more than one type. Else we return false. And that is used in the GUI manager, I think. So yeah. So first off, uh, I'm just going to explain this uh, scaling code quickly. Uh, I don't know if I've gone in like in depth in it. I've never mentioned it, like how it keeps like the GUI sort of looking the same. Uh, basically, it's proportional to this resolution. So even if you went to like twelve eighty by seven twenty, it would appear sort of like it does in nineteen twenty by ten eighty. Like all the ratios would be the same, so it take up the same proportion of the screen. I don't know why I'm clicking off it, but it may get stretched or compressed and stuff like that. I prefer doing it this way because you can ensure that like all the information is on screen and I just manually make sure that, uh, like check with a couple of different resolutions because you can just switch in here, like the different aspects so you can add your own resolution or whatever. And basically, just make sure that the GUI works fine like that. Uh, if it doesn't, if it gets uh, too blurry or stretched or whatever, you can always just have a play around with it. And yeah. But now we've added, aside from these floats and a vector, we've added uh, select the mode, selection mode to this GUI manager. This is basically just getting the uh, selection mode of the selection manager. So. Uh, we don't need to do that because that is not something we have anymore because that didn't work. So just ignore that. Uh, don't need to do that. Sorry. Oh shit. Beach. Okay, so we've got our on GUI function, which now has all this stuff. Uh, this basically controls the scaling. I'm not sure how exactly it works. I just know that it works. It's not necessary per se, but I like to do it, as I said. So you don't have to have this. Uh, you just have to change the uh, positioning of the recs for the GUI elements to suit whatever kind of screen size you're going for. Or if you have your own prefer preferred way of doing GUI, but I like doing it this way. So yeah, I might learn how to do uh, the canvas stuff one day, but who knows. So yeah, so first off, we check selecting mode. Uh, so if it's we're selecting tiles, creating buildings, or creating units, or we should probably have one for selecting buildings actually, but whatever. First off, we draw the GUI background. Uh, this is basically just a rect that takes up the bottom fifth of the screen, uh, like as a box to draw our GUI elements in, just like neatly mark it off from the rest of the game. So that's it. We just draw it at zero because that is the bottom of the screen. That is the uh, left edge of the screen. Original height. Uh, minus the original height divided by five. So that's basically getting the bottom of the screen and then whatever a fifth of the screen height is. So it's that, or the fifth of the original height is like 1080. So it's like 202 or something, 220, sorry. Actually, no, it'll be 217, it doesn't matter. And then we just draw it the original width and the original height divided by five, because we're having it as a fifth in height and the width of the entire screen, which draws this box here. You can see a little black transparent, semi-transparent bit. Yeah, and now uh, if we've got more than one type selected, so that's where we use this method here that returns a boolean, uh, we want to draw the unit filter buttons and if there isn't more than one unit type selected, we draw the unit information of the currently selected unit. So I should probably have a check for if we have actually have any units selected, but whatever, I can do that next time. So first off, draw filter unit buttons. We get this list of the uh, selected types of unit, and we have two ints, an X offset and a Y offset. And then we go through all the strings we got in the types of units we have selected, and we draw get a rect to draw the button. So we're saying, all right, we want to do 50 times 2 plus. Uh, so this puts us away from the edge of the screen. 
plus 200 times X offset. So basically, this will make the buttons be drawn apart from each other. Uh, since X offset is starts at zero, it'll just draw it at 50 on the X axis. But as we get to like the next button, it'll be 250, then 450, and so on, so on. Then we just draw it uh, original, like within the box. So we've got to be within the bounds of the bottom fifth of the screen. So we're saying like 50 times 100, 50 plus 100 times Y offset. Uh, yeah, so that will pose like 50 on the screen. Uh, sorry, whatever. Uh, yeah, you get the idea, hopefully. And then we're just saying the size of the width is 200 and the size of the height is 100. And now we check for the type. So if the type is worker, it's a button to filter workers. And if we press it, then it calls filter workers. And if it creates a button, it also increases the X offset. So the next button is set like an extra 200 pixels over to the right of the button. And we do that for hoplites and archers as well. And we make a check. So if the X offset is more than two, so I should probably set this actually to more than one because it doesn't demonstrate. Basically, the idea is that once the there's a certain number of units selected, we don't want to go off the edge of the, the like right edge of the screen. So we'll increase the x uh, y offset, sorry, by one, and the x off x offset will go back to zero. So we start drawing another row. So it decided to be an asshole for a second and not work, but hopefully, yep. You can see since we've got three selected, we've got another row. I know it goes a bit off screen, but you can see how it works. I just need to change the height offset to maybe have it like five pixels from the top of this little box bit, so it's in the screen and yeah. You get the point, we still press it, and we get the archers, and the archers move and stuff. Isn't that good? Uh, is there anything else? Yes, there is draw unit info. So basically, uh, we get the selected units. Uh, since this will only be drawn when we have uh, one type of unit selected, uh, it doesn't matter that we just call in the first element in the uh, list, because, well, it's only one type. It'll be the same for everyone, so it doesn't matter. Uh, so we get the unit name, the unit's current health, and the attack power. Uh, if you did have more than one selected and you were so inclined, you could cycle through all the units and get, say, an average unit health or something, if you wanted to, you know, you could do that. But I'm not going to, for simplicity's sake. But yeah, it's like sum of all health divided by the number of units in the list. It's not hard sum, basic maths. Uh, and then we combine all these elements with the, I think that's a backslash. Yeah, backslash n. Uh, basically, what backslash n does is a new line. So if I just show you there. Uh, yeah, basically, it starts archer, new line, health, new line, attack damage. And that is basically what that does. So that's a neat little trick for you. Uh, you can we could then add some uh, GUI styling to like make it all pretty or something if you wanted to, but for now I'm not going to. What else? Uh, yeah, and then we just get a rect to draw it. So we draw it on the left hand side in its own little box, and we then draw it. I think that's everything for this first part of the GUI on unit selection, so yeah. Okay, so as you can see, this ta episode we added like filtering units, uh, GUI to do so, and we added like unit the basic unit statistics, and yeah. So basically we're starting with the groundwork of the GUI and we're going to move on to stuff like the cursor next, uh, next episode actually, so we are going to say if we were hovering over a tree, we could, and we had like workers selected, we could uh, attack, not attack, uh, cut down the tree, and it'd be like a little axe icon. Or if we were hovering over a rock, we could have a little pickaxe icon. I don't know if they had pickaxes, pickaxes in ancient Greece. I'm not a classics student. I'm a computer science student. But yeah, uh, and then after that, we are going to be doing. What was it we were going to be doing? I said it at the start and forgotten again. Totally. The last 20 minutes. Uh, I will remember this. Nope, completely gone.
Oh, whatever. It'll come back to me. I'll just watch this video again. Uh, yeah, so like, comment, subscribe, all that shit. It's good. Helps me. Makes me happy, basically, to see that people care. So leave a comment if you've got any suggestions on how I can improve it. If you are some, like, whiskey and better than me. Fair bit few people are, but whatever. Uh, and, yeah, go check out my shit on Itch.io. There's Omega Station, which has been my uh, final year project for university. Hopefully it'll get me through it, even though university was my plan B, and this is all I want to do the game dev thing. So I'll probably try and release Loud or Quiet sometime this year, which you can also download an early build on Itch.io. I've just started getting back into developing that. I've got a new level planned out. Uh, most of the level remakes I did were all done, actually. I've got one more level to remake. I've implemented all of the, uh, well, started all of the uh, like little FBI folder things that I was doing to give a bit of background. I've got all the game, the rest of the game planned out now. Got a few more ideas for trailers. So yeah, hopefully by maybe, hopefully by the end of the year at latest, it will be out on Steam Greenlight or hopefully for sale, which you can buy and you know keep me in kebabs and. Cheap cider and monster because I have the apparent dietary requirements of a teenager. Well, I'm only 21, so it doesn't matter. I will stop rambling on now. Just watching. Bye.